This is part two of our two-part tutorial on how to design hopper feeder conveyor drives. In our first tutorial, we discussed the purposes of hoppers, standard conveyor belt loads, and special hopper loading. In this lesson, we will discuss arching theory. We will learn how to calculate hopper drag load and we'll discuss at some length pressure relief tips. How do we go about calculating the amount of drag force which a hopper will exert on a conveyor belt? Here we have an empty hopper. Here we have a full hopper. The question is, how do we calculate the amount of drag that this full hopper will exert on the belt? We need to calculate the equal and opposite force in order to overcome the drag exerted by the hopper on the hopper feeder belt. The secret is, we do not need to take into account the complete weight of material in the hopper, but rather only that amount of material which can be considered active, as shown here beneath this parabolic shape. So what is the force required to overcome this amount of active material? The way to calculate the drag is by calculating the amount of active material and apply a cutting force vector. We can define our active zone by considering its length, the length of the hopper opening, and its width, called L and W in this example. We can conservatively approximate the active volume with a rectangular prism rather than attempting to calculate a parabolic shape. We use L times W times H as shown below. If the width is smaller than the length, we set the height equal to three times the width. If the length is smaller than the width, then we set the height to three times the length. We can now determine the active weight by simply multiplying the active volume by the bulk density. Once we calculate that force, we can determine the cutting force, the drag load, by multiplying the active weight by 0.5. Then we can determine the total required belt pull by adding hopper drag load to the standard conveyor effective tension. Here's an example of how to calculate hopper drag load. In this example, we have one opening and no pressure relief added at the bottom of the hopper. The standard conveyor loading for a 20 foot long conveyor carrying two inch minus stone with a 90 pound per cubic foot bulk density at 500 tons per hour on a 48 inch wide conveyor belt at 100 feet per minute has a belt dry requirement of one horsepower. Effective tension is 330 pounds. 330 pounds times 100 feet per minute equals 33,000 foot pounds per minute, which as we discussed in the first part of this tutorial, equals one horsepower. One horsepower equals 33,000 foot pounds per minute. Now let's add a hopper to this conveyor. Adding a hopper with a 3.2 foot wide opening and a five foot long opening that results in a hopper drag load of 6,769 pounds. How do we calculate that? 3.2 times five times three times 3.2, since the width is more narrow than the length, we use three times 3.2 as the height. We multiply that by 90 pounds per cubic foot. We multiply that by the cutting factor to come up with the 6,769 pounds. What's the power to overcome drag? 6,769 pounds times 100 feet per minute divided by 33,000 foot-pounds per minute per horsepower or 20.5 horsepower. When we add the hopper drag power requirement to the uh, standard conveyor drive requirement of one horsepower, our raw horsepower required is 21.5 horsepower. This will allow us to demonstrate how the Romeca Corporation conveyor drive 
power calculation program can be used to add hopper drag load to a standard loading condition. You can see that a conveyor with a length of 20 feet, a handling rate of 500 tons per hour, and a belt speed of 100 feet per minute has been preloaded, showing that it requires approximately one horsepower to carry the load. We can add a hopper drag load by simply entering the width at 38 inches, the length at 60 inches, and the number of openings of one to the program. Note that a hopper drag load of 6,769 pounds has been added, bringing total TE effective tension to over 7,000 pounds. This shows that we have a power requirement now of 23.2 horsepower. If possible, it would be good to relieve pressure from the conveyor belt. How do we do that? Well, it's essential that we minimize the hopper opening as much as possible without restricting flow. We should add pressure relief as close as possible to the bottom of the hopper opening. In this example, we're going to add one inverted angle to convert one hopper opening to two hopper openings. We're going to reduce L while we keep W width constant. In a photograph, you can see a typical hopper from the side, and this is the view from the top. Notice that an inverted angle has been welded to the bottom of the hopper opening. These are also called tents. We can approximate two active volumes with two rectangular prisms in which L prime equals L minus T, this is the width of the inverted angle, divided by two. L minus T divided by two gives us L prime. To be conservative, we should ignore T. To calculate volume, we multiply L prime times W times H as before. If W is smaller than L prime, then H equals three times the width. If L prime is smaller than the width, then the height equals three times L prime. We determine the active weight of two prisms. Then we determine the cutting force, the drag load, by applying the factor of 0.5. And then we add the hopper drag load to a standard conveyor effective tension. Now let's review how to decrease hopper pressure even more. If changing one opening to two openings is good, then changing one opening to four openings may be even better. In fact, it is. Here's how you can calculate that. You simply approximate four active volumes with four rectangular prisms using the techniques we learned previously. To be conservative, we will continue to ignore T and calculate the volume length times width times height as before. Once we have the four volumes, we can determine the active weight of the four prisms. That will allow us to determine the cutting force by simply multiplying the weight times 0.5, giving us the drag load. Finally, that hopper drag load may be added to the standard conveyor effective tension, TE, so that power can be determined. Now let's use the program to see the impact of adding pressure relief. We're going to change one hopper opening, it's 38 inches by 60 inches, to four hopper openings, 19 inches wide, 30 inches long, total quantity of four. Notice that the required power drops dramatically to 12.2 horsepower. Hopper drag was reduced from over 6,000 pounds to 3,384 pounds, yielding a total effective tension, in this case, of 3,718 pounds. This tutorial has shown that arching theory may be used to approximate hopper surge loading on feeder belt conveyors. Only the active volume of material in the hopper 
rather than the total volume needs to be considered. This lesson demonstrated how to calculate hopper drag load by approximating parabolic shapes with rectangular prisms, then calculating their weight and then applying a cutting factor. Finally, we presented a technique to calculate how to reduce hopper drag load by adding pressure relief to hopper bottoms. This animation shows that revising a single opening hopper bottom to a four opening hopper bottom cuts the active volume in half. In summary, the active weight of material on the feeder belt and hopper drag load are linearly proportional to the active volume. Therefore, our example demonstrates that reducing active volume from 154 cubic feet to 77 cubic feet reduces drag load from 6,769 pounds to 3,384 pounds. This in turn reduced required conveyor drive power from 23.2 horsepower to 12.2 horsepower. To see more conveyor drive design tips or to obtain a copy of our belt conveyor power calculation program, go to RomecaCorp.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.